Hello, hello and welcome back on Brahma Today. Still with me, Elena Abla. You're watching BNC Brahma News Channel where it's all about you. And in the studio, I'm speaking to Frida Hamid, our leadership coach. And today we're talking about education. The question of why education is not about economics alone. Of course, this Friday, Budget 2019 will be tabled for the first time under the new Pakatan Harapan government. One sector that will always be watched carefully will be the funding for education. And this probably has the biggest group of stakeholders holders in the country uh, and uh, Farida, I think uh, we, we, we speak about education quite a bit even though yes. when we talk about uh, leadership and communication and stuff like that. Uh, but two weeks ago, Kazana apparently the research arm released a report yes. that showed Malaysia's expenditure on education has grown over the years from 500 million mm -hmm. back in the 70s mm -hmm. uh, right now to close to 56 billion uh, in 2016. But Kazana has cautioned that funding alone did not equal results. I think this is a key point. Funding does not equal results. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it cited, of course, a World Bank study that said that despite going to school for an average of 12 years, uh, Malaysian students get only about nine years' worth of meaningful education. That's really sad yes. in terms but of that, that comparison, <laughs> right? Yeah. And uh, so to discuss if more funding for education is actually needed, how can we prepare young people to be more productive for the digital economy, Farida? Mm. Uh, let's look at this. Finance Minister Lim Guan Heng has told Malaysians to expect yes. sort of, uh, you know, tightening of the belt, yes. austerity budget for 2019. Do you expect funding to be trimmed for education sector? I expect it will be trimmed a little bit. Yeah. Um, trimmed not really in terms of the most pri uh, the things that need to be prioritised. But I believe that it will be trimmed in terms of more value add. Right. Um, you see, austerity, I've got no issue because... I think we know for a fact that a lot of money has been wasted on various initiatives in education over the last couple of years. So I think we have to look at education uh, throughout our history has largely been an economic issue because we've been going from an agricultural uh, society to then an industrial society and now to a digital economy. But there's two sides to this whole discussion. One is we talk about the infrastructure, which is the building of schools, um, other infrastructure tools, technology and all that. The second one is the focus on the skills and abilities to build wealth for the nation. So. For the longest time, our history has made education about economics. Yes. Um, so I think what we need to look at is we have a lot of the infrastructure in place. We have the tools in place. But we know over and over again the number of unemployed graduates we have in the country. We know over and over again the mushrooming of private schools that are happening in the country. We know over and over again, we read about this in the newspapers all the time, that parents are so unhappy with the quality of education. So what we need to do now is actually look at the substance of education rather than throwing money after more infrastructure. That is my perspective on this. So essentially what is happening is that you're throwing money for more money in it. Exactly, so yeah. You put money so that you gain more wealth in, in, in terms of that. Yes, but, but it's a false equivalence. It's but, not true. But the World Bank says Malaysia is projected to achieve that high income yes, uh, status yes. as early as 2020 yes. as we're projecting or yes. what we were targeting. Yes. Uh, that seems to indicate that uh, we are teaching the young people the skills to get a good job, earn more money uh, yeah. and for the nation to actually be wealthier based on numbers yeah. and statistics. So, is there merit in our education? Yeah, I was, like I was saying earlier, this is uh, the issue about high income and education is a false equivalence. Right. We have been fed this over and over again. Um, this is very, actually, in my opinion, a very impoverished view of education. Yeah. See, we are being told that the number of A's a person gets and uh, we, we equate that to success in life. Yeah. But you know the reality, it's not so simplistic, right? Yeah. Um, so, the, a lot of the uh, economic uh, benchmark or the standards are based on high income, right? Uh, but the reality is we talk about wealth, but we don't talk about well-being. And this is where I see that it's a really big problem because we also equate intelligence with intellect. Intellect is what we get in school. It's information. But intelligence has multiple dimensions to it. So, we, I think we've... What we need to understand is we are teaching people a lot of information, which is actually useless because the information the young people today get it off the internet. They're watching YouTube. There is no information that any teacher anywhere can give them that they cannot find the latest information on YouTube. So what is the role of education? The role of education is to expand your horizons. This And it's to teach you intelligence. It's to 
teach you how to think about things. It is about being creative. It's about looking at the world with uh, the world is in flux. People have different opinions. People are different. How do you get on with people who are different than you? That part of education has sadly been left by the wayside. I think education has been a political football too for the longest time, right? Um, and so this is where we are seeing a lot of problems because we are we are having we are so proud because our literacy rate in the in the I think our literacy rate is ninety eight percent or ninety nine percent. Yeah, something to be very proud of. Yep. But literacy alone does not make a human being. You can know your your literacy, you can know your mathematics, but what do you need to survive in this world that we, that is so uncertain going forward? That's right. Yeah. But I want to uh, touch on what you just brought up in terms of we've been bombarded with information, not just in schools, everywhere. There's information. Mm. But that does not translate necessarily mm. to being able to use that yes. information. Yes. So that's the one thing that's missing here. If I would like to use uh, one word, it's connect. We are not able to connect yeah. either with each other yes. or even with the information you have to use it. So the yes. connection, there's one that's missing yes. in the education system. Yes. So perhaps that's where we need to build on but what would if, if you I can, if I can just add a little bit to that um, one of the issues is because we are so excited about the digital economy right so I, even the, I think the deputy education minister announced just I think a couple of days ago that they are going to introduce e-textbooks next year right. so uh, going back to what you said we get very excited about all of this but the connection is missing right we introduce new tools but again the substance is missing because if you if you talk to any CEO of any big company they have a dime a dozen people who come with uh, university degrees, right? But what they look for is attitudes. What they look for are standards. What they look for are values. What has happened to all of that? That has fallen by the wayside in the pursuit of the, the myth that if you have a high grade in school or you have a high grade at university, somehow that equals that you're going to earn a lot of money and you're going to be successful. So we've run out of time. If you have one sentence or yes. just to summarize, where do we look towards this? How do we change? I think we've got to go back to the future. Remember, we used to have one of the best education systems in the world years ago, mm -hmm. and now we have dropped very far behind. I am not a believer in that we have to ask foreigners to come in and teach us how to improve our education system. I think we need to look at values, we need to look at attitudes, and we need to look at the, the arts, creativity, sports, because this is where a person's personality and passion come to fruition. That is what makes a whole human being, that a young, people, young person is able to have passion and have personality, because what we have done to them, you know, there's this saying, children are born geniuses and we spend the next 12 years dumbing them oh down my to be goodness. average, yes. right? Yes. So we need to bring that back. And, and and if you look at the education system that we had about 20, 30 years ago, there was a much more equal weightage in terms of academics and sports and theatre and the arts. So I think we need to go back a little bit to the past. So uh, if you were to say uh, you want to, the, what you'd like to see introduced or change in education system uh, so that we can produce the skills for the digital, digital economy, that's that's one of the things that's happening right now. Uh, sorry to give us a bit more, more time. Okay. Uh, digital, it's, it's changing everything. It's changing the way we communicate, we talk, mm. we function as human beings uh, are already altered. It's, yes. it's irreversible, yes. the way that we... Uh, uh, handle, sync, see, yes. view, feel, yes. even. Yes. So uh, this is a challenging space to be in for educators, mm. for policy makers, mm. for parents, yes. for students, everyone, yes. all alike. Yes. How do we then, you know, uh, maneuver or you know navigate our way through this? I think there has to be political will. I think the the people in charge need to look at the substance of the content that we are teaching. We know it's not working. There is no argument about that. Everybody agrees that the education system that we have from kindergarten to, to, to year 12 is not working. So if it's not working, what would you do? You have to make the changes. The, and we also know from companies, the CEOs, like I mentioned just now, we know that the, what they're looking for are attitudes and values and standards. All that have dropped by the wayside. Technology, we can always learn. But you have to inculcate 
values and attitude and standards. Where does that come from? That comes from a higher intelligence. The higher intelligence, where does that come from? That comes from the arts mm. and the humanities and mm. sports because then you are required to mix with people. You see, we have lost our imagination mm. with digital technology, yes. right? Yes. Because anything and everything that you want to find out, so you just can one find click. out, right? Yeah. So we need to bring back imagination. How do we bring imagination back? It's with theatre. Right. It's with plays. It's with music. Which, which is it's interesting. Which is interesting because I think we had this kind of conversation before about uh, the nece necessity for uh, engaging uh, your other senses, not yes. just, you know, about creating that uh, that next bug, earning that money, yes. you know, yeah. getting that A, yeah. uh, but uh, being free to explore, being yes. human in that sense, yes. as opposed to being a bit robotic right now. Yes. But the, right now, you see the focus, is everything is about Industry 4.0, yes. you know, uh, robotics, cybernetics yes. and all that. Yes. It's, uh, it's sort of like um, the focus uh, of governments and there is a little bit of a move away from the necessity yes. for creativity. There is there is a place, we talk about artificial intelligence but we are losing the human intelligence, yes, right? Yes. Because these, again, these are all technology and these are tools. We need them. I'm not discounting them. What I'm saying is if we are going to build wealth for the nation, we cannot do it without the well-being of our people as well. Yes. So we must focus on the well-being because just to add a little bit of uh, um, um, not sad news but a bit of worrying news, the National Mental Health Survey 2017 showed that one in five teenagers are suffering from depression. Yeah. And so, and we know the mental health of young people is affected by social media yes. and technology. They feel very isolated. Yeah. So schools in which they spend so much of time must be a place where they're able to express their personality, their imagination, their excitements, their passion. They must. This is where they must learn how to get on with people of different uh, different races, different religions. How do you get on with somebody who has a totally different opinion than you? I, I completely like where you're going with this in terms of the mental health because it is very apparent that uh, the society is suffering as a yes. whole uh, in terms of your mental health. Uh, it's, it's no small uh, matter that you have a lot of uh, suicides, uh, mm. you have a lot of uh, stories of uh, people going on a nervous breakdown or not yes. able to cope, stress and saying that I need to take a break. Every yes. time you say Run I need out. to take a break I, yes. I, and not just take a break on a holiday but really take a break from life. Yes. It, it kind of feels like that. Yes. So there is not enough emphasis. If education needs to change, there needs to be some kind of focus on the yes. ability to grow the our maturity yes. to be able to handle the challenges Yes. that are coming and are existent and here yes. and how can the education system in our system itself not just external things that yes. you have to subscribe to yes. whether it's good for tuition or take a yes. course or take a workshop yes. but part of it how can we inculcate and incorporate that in that is why I feel again coming back to the arts and the humanities and sports see we give a lot of weightage to maths and science which is fine there's a lot of weightage there why can we not give equal weightage or the equal time for, for arts, music, dance, sports. Why do we not give them? They're actually pushed by the wayside in the pursuit Still. of the A's. Right. The A's which we think is going to give us money and then we're going to become a wealthy nation or a wealthy people. Again, that is not true. It has been shown over and over again. Pe if people are unhappy and if people do not know who they are, what they believe, what their standards are, what are we talking about? What are the three things if you were to okay. be able to tell the whoever that's listening, whether it's the minister, it's the government, policy makers, whoever that is in the position to be able to make changes, yes. what are the three things you'd like to see happening? Okay. First thing is literacy. I think we got that pretty much right. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time. That is uh, English and mathematics and the such. The second one is pedagogy, mm. which is the teaching Right? The teaching is not standing in front of a room and giving instructions. The teaching is not there's only one right answer to any questions. So the pedagogy, the way teachers teach, they're not actually teaching. They have to facilitate, mm. which means then you have a topic and then you have opinions. You encourage young people right. to have an opinion based uh, on age, age appropriate, whatever they may be discussing. People must be, have an opinion. They must learn how to speak out. They must learn how to express an opinion. So that is really important. Under pedagogy, there's also assessment. And I think assessment also, we again, we are going for all the A's, but the, all the other intelligences do not have equal weightage. And finally, again, I come back 
back to this. I know I may sound a little bit like a broken record, but I think we do need the arts. Mm. And they need to have equal weightage to maths and science mm. because everybody is different. You see, the education system was from the industrial age. This was a very logical, linear kind of education. It mm. is not creative education because it was designed to create blue-collar workers mm. to work in factories to follow yes. rules and regulations. Right. So what we need now is we need for the future economy, the digital economy, what our country needs, what the world needs is people who are creative, who can come up with solutions that are different or, Im or at least an improvement that do not that to which we don't have the solutions right now. So when you put people in a cookie cutter kind of environment and you're trying to take someone who is very interested in music or sports and trying to make sure that they score very high on maths, what's going to happen is the person who is good in that area is not going to do well at school. Yeah. Again, I'm not saying anything we don't know, right? They're not going to do well at school because academics has largely been very linear. It's for people who have the logical, the left side has been the, the, all the logical stuff, the maths and the science. There's no space for the creativity. But we as human beings, we are creative beings. Mm. And when you don't allow that creativity to come out, what you see then is the loss of uh, passion, mm. lack of personality. We yes. see that a lot with our young people. They have very little personality, very low standards for themselves and for others. And they're not going to be successful even if you send them for, tu for tuition from morning to night. They're not going to do well. So I think there's three parts to this. The literacy, the pedagogy, the teaching itself must be adjusted to encourage critical and creative thinking and then the last part is there must be some adjustments in the curriculum to allow people with different intelligences with different passions to also excel right i i really look forward to this because i think we're at the, the a ripe time we are ready for change we want change and i'm looking forward to uh those that are able to create that change to take a risk and create something that uh, we can uh, sort of like you need to uh, offset this, not just keep, like you said, linear. There needs to be some, something that will Don't trust chase you. Don't money. <laughs> we have to ensure the well-being of our people. But on, on the final note, I'd just like to say there has to be political will. Yes. Because we have been arguing for years whether we need to have English. I mean, come on, people. It's time. Yes. It's time. It is the passport to the world economy. If you're even arguing about whether people need to be able to speak <laughs> English well, I think they truly lost it. That's yeah. right. Thank you, Farida, Thank for you. that. Uh, that's all the time that we have on Barama today. Thanks for staying with us to the end of the show. Bye for now. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.